one of the Roman roads, the actual Roman roads that Jesus would have gone up to the Passover dinner, gone through the Kidron Valley, up to the Mount of Olives where Jesus would have uh, hid with his disciples for prayer. He was in agony during that time. He would have been up there praying because he knew what his fate was to be. He knew he was going to be our sacrificial lamb. He knew that the Passover, he would be coming up through this valley that was full of blood from the lambs that were being slaughtered for the temple. So he's up in the Mount of Olives. The Roman soldiers come. In fact, Peter took out a sword and tried to defend Jesus. And he actually even cut off one of the slave's ears. But Jesus, having compassion, picked up the slave's ear and put it back on. But here's the deal. They took, the Roman soldiers led Jesus, not tore, not was mighty. They led him like a sheep being led to the slaughter, which is extremely important. They brought Jesus through the Kidron Valley, up these Roman steps right here to Caiaphas' house. Now it says that the Bible, the, the disciples dispattered, dis, you know, went their own way. They were scared. They also were gonna be arrested. But come over here, I'm gonna show you something. There's this beautiful bronze statue right here that depicts what happened in this courtyard. As they were bringing Jesus to Caiaphas' home, he passed by here. Everybody heard, everybody who just a Sunday before was worshiping, going, Hosanna in the highest. They were so excited that Jesus was going to be the Messiah. Just a few days later, here they are watching him. They're wanting him to be persecuted. Even Peter denied Jesus three times. This is to depict the three people that asked him if he knew the Messiah, if he knew Yeshua, if he knew Jesus. Here's Peter saying, no, I don't know him. I don't know him. They said, you must be a Galilean because of his accent. The people in the Galilee had a different accent than those here in Jerusalem. Three times Jesus, uh, Peter was denied Jesus. And it's kind of like us. We deny Jesus certain different times of our life too. Uh, in front of people or not being bold in our faith. And that's actually what Peter is representing here. You can see a soldier probably wanting to say, you know, are you one of them? Probably Peter was scared he was going to get prosecuted too. Here's a woman because, you know, here's the interesting thing. Peter's family had a very successful fishing market, fishing business up in the Galilee. And they think that Peter's family actually provided fish for Caiaphas, for the high priest. His, he, you know, they depict Peter as, as poor, but actually they think Peter's family was very wealthy because that's how he was well known here in the old city as a fish merchant. And you can see all the people uh, denying Jesus. Let's go down after Jesus came through here. Jesus looked at Peter. He knew Peter was denying him and Peter was ashamed. He could not believe he denied Jesus three times. Can you imagine how he felt walking with Jesus all, those, all during all that time? And now here he denied him. Let's go down and look at the dungeon. I'm standing in front of Caiaphas' house, which is up on uh, the Zion, Mount Zion, across from the Kidron Valley, across from Mount of Olives. This beautiful bronze statue is, uh, or doors actually, are a representation of Jesus' Passover dinner, or what uh, Western Christians know is the Last Supper. This would have been the area where Jesus would have had his Last Supper, or the Last Passover, before he continued down the Kidron Valley, back to the Mount of Olives, where he prayed with his disciples uh, in agony, actually before the Romans came and got him. You can see how beautiful these doors are. It even shows the rooster that Peter denied Christ from. These are just absolutely beautiful doors. And here's Peter, and there's Jesus, and the rest of the disciples. Uh, these bronze doors are very well known, and it's the entrance to Caiaphas' house that we will be going into. Annas and the father-in-law of Caiaphas who was in charge of the money 
Why would they bring him here during the middle of the night, which wasn't what they would usually do in the middle of the night? It's because Jesus had turned the, the money over in the temple and it really made them mad, it, like lost their money. So he stood before her. And also Caiaphas was friends with Pontius Pilate. So what he did is he turned Jesus over to Pontius Pilate before, after he stood in front of Caiaphas. But Jesus spent the night in this dungeon. It was cold, it was wet, and you can imagine the stench from other prisoners being in there. They had lowered him into a hole that I'm going to take you into. But can you imagine our Father, our, our Savior, staying here by himself, lonely, knowing what was going to happen? It had to be absolutely miserable. So let's go look at the actual dungeon where Jesus was actually held all by himself, cold, wet. It had to be horrible. Let's go over and look at that. So right now I'm walking down to the dungeon area where Jesus actually would have been lowered by the prison, by the guards of Caiaphas and Amos because they were very threatened by Jesus or by his teachings and the things that he was saying in the temple courtyards because he was saying things that were against uh, not just only the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees but also against money that the Romans would have wanted. So this would have been very similar to a water system that they would have used for uh, putting prisoners in. If you can see the hole, that's what they would have lowered Jesus down in. Can you imagine how dark it was and the stench? But this is where it would have been. So just look at this. You can see the holes where the, where the guards would actually uh, hold down their, their uh, fire sticks to check on a prisoner to make sure they were still alive. And this hole was exactly where they would bring uh, Jesus up and down from. These stairs were not here, of course. It was just a four-wall, cold, damp area. You can see the chiseled out time. It's unbelievable that our Lord stayed here for you and for me.